after the announcement by Flashman and Fonz about the discovery of computer, you know, this is something so unique in the life of a scientist, something completely new that comes out. In 1993, I met someone who was doing experiments with solid state electrolytes. So I started doing this type of experiments when I was in Berkeley and I got positive results with deuterium and not with hydrogen. So I was convinced by myself that something go was going on with a different way of doing experiments and uh, that was very positive. After that, I tried to publish my work. The editor sent my paper to a French scientist, Georges Longchamp in Grenoble, and Georges Longchamp didn't believe it to my results. So he asked me to come to this lab and do the, repeat the experiment with him. Georges Longchamp was the only one beside Man mice to have reproduced exactly the experiment of Pons and Fleischmann with the same type of cells, even the cells given by Martin Fleischmann. So I have seen the results there already. In one of my experiments, after a conference in, um, in Canada, you know, there was a guy who said you should use gold as an anode. And to my great surprise, after a few hours, the gold disappeared completely etched by the, the, the oxygen of the, of the reaction. I was amazed. So I said, well, I should use that as a cathode. Maybe it's interesting. So I did a normal experiment with a platinum anode, and I used this cathode with gold plate in the cathode. And that was the best experiment, the boiling experiment I ever had. It went to boiling very quickly, very fast. So gold, depositing gold in platinum is like a diode goes one way but not the other way. So that means you can put a lot more deuterium or hydrogen inside the gun. So I did that experiment that showed a lot of excessive. It was so fast and so powerful I couldn't measure it. It was too much. So I tried later on to do the same thing, do some more gold. I could never manage to make the same gold as the one I had made by accident. So that was one of the experiments that was very successful, but not reproducible. If you use nickel, nickel is very same very same structure as palladium, but it's not a noble metal. That means it gets oxidized. But nickel doesn't absorb hydrogen at room temperature. To have hydrogen inside the nickel, you have to heat it up at least at 200 degrees C. But then hydrogen goes inside at high temperature. It doesn't go out. So that's very good. So you can have materials that absorb hydrogen at high temperature and nickel is perfect for that. So I've done a lot of experiments with nickel nanopowders and I've obtained reproducible excessive. I mean, I can reproduce it anytime. It works very well. We know cold fusion works and so I think we are progressing pretty well. The other thing that's happening also, the fact that there are more and more startup companies that are working in the field in the US and Japan and um, that's important. That means that the industry is interested.